Welcome once again to Lato's Law. Here's Steve Lato. A while back, I told you the story about, I think it was over in England, where somebody had a really, really, really old, I think it was a TV set. And every time they turned it on, it would cause problems with the local people uh, and their wireless And nobody would have suspected that somebody using a television set from like the mid-1950s was causing the problems. And so here's an interesting and related story uh, sent to me by Mark, Philip, and Will from The Independent. A man accidentally shut down his town's entire internet. And he was trying to keep his kids off the internet. But he wound up keeping the entire town off the internet. Now, this happened in France. So Anthony Cuthbertson wrote the story. Two French towns were knocked offline for several nights after one parent's misguided attempt to keep his kids off the internet, according to local reports. So this is the thing some people are going to wonder. If you're a father, is this really the only way you can keep your kids off the internet is to (laughs) crash the internet? (laughs) Residents of uh, two towns in southwest France lost access to the internet. And phone signal from midnight to 3 a.m. across multiple dates when an unnamed man used a multi-wave bandit jammer, reported by France Blue. A multi-wave bandit jammer. The unnamed man now faces a fine of 30,000 euros and up to six months in prison if found guilty of causing the mass outage. A mobile phone operator was first alerted to the issue when one of its antennas stopped working in that town. A technician from the, uh, I'm guessing it's the National Agency of Frequencies, ANFR, went to the site with equipment to detect where the disruption was coming from. And it's four French words. And one of them is of, I know that that is correct. And the other ones have the right, you know, the roots to be an agency, a national agency of frequencies. But I could be slightly wrong on the exact derivation and extrapolation of that. Using a portable reader, the technician discovered hostile waves coming from a house where a man reportedly admitted to using a jamming device to prevent his children from using the internet late at night. So it took somebody from uh, the phone company to look into this first after a complaint from somebody who says, hey, the phones aren't working out here. And so then uh, the technician came out there from the uh, national agency. The alleged culprit believed he was only blocking the Wi-Fi and phone signal of his house. Though the ANFR warned that these devices often have a wider range of impact than vendors typically advertise. And so, you know, here's the thing. The Wi-Fi in the house is turned on. And rather than simply turning it off, he jams the signal of it. So if his kids try to use it, they can't use it. Which it seems to me that having the Wi-Fi on and the jammer on is more complicated than just shutting the Wi-Fi off. Now, I know some people are going to say, but Steve, what if the Wi-Fi runs other things in the house? Well, won't the jammer mess that up too? So the, the jammer works by emitting a powerful signal on the same frequency as a phone or Wi-Fi operator, preventing devices from receiving the intended signal. An incident report posted to the ANFR's website noted that the suspect's children had become addicted to social networks and other applications since the lockdowns imposed during the pandemic. After consulting forums on the internet, the father had decided that a jammer was the best solution to put an end to these excesses. The the jammer was the best solution. (laughs) He could have unplugged the Wi-Fi. I guess that's probably an advanced move. A radical solution, but above all, illegal and disproportionate. They said that the uh, equipment did not just jam his house, but also his neighbors, the inhabitants of his town, and the inhabitants of the neighboring town. So this all happened in France. And I remember having a discussion with somebody years ago where somebody asked me rhetorically, how hard would it be to create something that interferes with cell phone signals? And I said, well, it probably wouldn't be that difficult, but it'd be illegal. And they said, oh, why is that? And I said, well, because the FCC in America regulates what happens in the airwaves. And there's other federal agencies. And obviously, if somebody's making a cell phone call, because my friend had said this, he goes, I'm sick and tired of people using cell phones, places they shouldn't be using cell phones. I said, okay. And he goes, what they should do is just have a little thing that that they, you know, like in a movie theater, say. They just set up a thing that that just jams the frequencies so they can't use cell phones in there. 
And I said, well, I suspect that's illegal. And also, uh, it'd probably be hard to limit it to just that theater. Now, I know someone in the audience is going to argue and say, but Steve, if they built the theater like a Faraday cage, <laughs> they could do it. But again, you'd probably still be breaking the law regarding the transmission of radio waves. But the weird part is, I remember years later, someone told me, and they said, oh, by the way, there's companies now selling these devices. And I said, what kind of devices? And they said, oh, a device that, that you can use to interfere with somebody's cell phone usage. And I said, what does it do? And, and now, I didn't follow up on the research, so I don't know 100% about this. But the guy told me, he said, generally what it does is you hit it and it, it will hang up the phone call. It will cause the phone call to get disconnected. So if you're sitting on a bus, for instance, and somebody's sitting down there yakking on their phone at, you know, three times the normal human voice level, uh, that you can just reach in your pocket and hang up their phone for them, whether they like it or not. And again, that would be illegal. Now, I'm simply <laughs> pointing out the legalities of this because I am, in fact, an attorney. So as an attorney, it's my job to point out the legalities of things that we're talking about. So as noted here in France, France has laws too. And they've also got federal agencies or national agencies that oversee certain things and regulate certain things. And they apparently also have, and I'm guessing it's the equivalent of the FCC because it's the National Agency of Frequencies. But again, someone who knows French better than I could chime in on that and, and tell me that. And also tell me how to pronounce, it looks like messages, but with an N, Massange, Massange, is that the town name? M-E-S-S-A-N-G-E-S. -S -S -E I know the S will be silent, so it's probably Massange, the town of Massange. So I took... <laughs> One year of French, seventh grade, and I know like six words. No, I know a little bit more than that, but I, I don't speak French, and I, and I rarely read it except for when I encounter a story like this. So uh, as for the Agence Nationale des Frequences, uh, I'm guessing that's the National Frequency Agency. But again, I could be wrong on that too. So I'm not claiming to be an expert in France or the French language, but we do know that a man accidentally shut down his town's entire internet in the towns in France. And that was reported by the national agency that looked into it. And they're pointing out that, yes, even there it's against the law. So he could go to jail and get hit with a huge fine. But, uh, of course, as a first offender who claims that he didn't really know what he was doing, I doubt that that'll happen. Although I'm not as familiar with the French legal system as I am with the American one. So there you go. Mark, Philip, and Will, thanks for sending it. And that's why you don't jam the airwaves rather than just unplugging the Wi-Fi. How hard is that? Questions or comments, put them below. Let's talk to you later. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching Lato's Law. Do not take life too seriously. You will never get out alive.